Hello everyone and welcome to Barca News. It is July 14th, 2022 and Dembele has officially renewed his contract with Barcelona and the club have announced a new coach for the Barcelona B squad. Also, I have several updates for you regarding Robert Lewandowski, Jules Koundé and Cesar Aspilicueta. Finally, I will be reviewing at the end of this video the match between Barcelona and Olot that took place yesterday. So make sure you watch all the way through for my first thoughts and impressions regarding Xavi's new project. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Mo and I created this channel so it can be a one-stop shop for all Barcelona fans where they can come here and get the latest news regarding FC Barcelona. Whether it be transfer rumors, injury updates, post-match analysis, or anything else, you will find it here. So I invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news regarding our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Now I'll begin with the official confirmation from the club of a news that I shared with you last week and that is that the Mexican legend Rafa Marquez is now officially the new coach for the Barcelona B, B squad which will be known as Barcelona Athletic beginning next season. Now Rafa Marquez will be taking, uh, will be substituting Sergi Bajuan who has stepped down as Barcelona Athletic's coach and will be taking on a different role within the institution. Now, Rafa Marquez arrived in Barcelona in 2003 and he stayed on for seven seasons where he put on many memorable performances including becoming the first Mexican player to win the Champions League. Now, Rafa Marquez also won the sextuple during his last season under the management of Pep Guardiola. Well now the Mexican legend has come back to Barcelona to be Barcelona Athletic's new coach. This is an effort by the club to recruit Barcelona's legends to take on different roles and within the institution and take advantage of their vast knowledge to help strengthen the club and build the future generation of players in Barcelona. Now on to the second official announcement from the club and that is that Osman Dembele has officially renewed his contract in a ceremony that took place in the Tito Villanueva Stadium. Now Dembele has signed a contract until 2024 and he accepted a salary reduction where he will reportedly make around 6.5 million euros. Now this contract is performance based so Dembele might end up making more if he meets certain criteria such as staying healthy, playing a certain amount of matches and showing up on time to trainings which are things that he hasn't done in the past. So by putting these incentives in the contract Barcelona are hoping to motivate Dembele to work to train and play as hard as possible and stay in form like he has the past six months. Now with the renewal of his contract, Dembele has put an end to a very long saga that has dragged on since December of last year where the club attempted to renew Dembele several times with Dembele ignoring these efforts and going around Europe offering himself to other clubs in hopes to make more money. Now, Dembele's agent Musa Sissoko soon found out that no European club were willing to pay Dembele the ridiculous amounts that they were asking for and now they've returned to Barcelona to accept Barcelona's offer which is lower than the original offer that was made back in January. So now Musa Sissoko did not only not get uh, more money for Dembele but he has also uh, he has accepted a lower offer than what was originally made by Barcelona. So I'm very surprised that Dembele has not yet fired his agent given the terrible mishandling of this contract renewal. Now there is a sense of victory in the club because they were able to keep a player that Xabi asked for uh, for a reduced salary. However, in my opinion, I believe that this operation has, her has hurt the club because this is FC Barcelona after all. It's one of the biggest clubs in the world and we shouldn't be begging players to renew their contracts or to stay at the club no matter how talented they are. We should want players who want to come to Barcelona, who want to dedicate 100% of themselves for, uh, to their own success and to the success of the club. Now I hope that Barcelona and Dembélé have both learned from this ordeal and I really hope that Dembélé does end up finding his form and living up to all the hype uh, and promise that we all expected of him when we originally signed him from Dortmund. 
Well, now that the club have officially signed Rafinha and renewed Dembele's contract, they will be turning their entire attention uh, to the operation to acquire Robert Lewandowski from Bayern Munich. Now, as I've mentioned many times before, Bayern Munich have finally accepted to sell Robert Lewandowski and Barcelona have submitted an offer for 50 million euros fix, which Bayern Munich have been asking for. So now Barcelona are awaiting Bayern Munich's response and they have not ruled out Matteo Alemani personally traveling to Munich to try to finalize this deal and bring Robert Lewandowski next week to the club. Now there are several reports and images that have emerged from Bayern Munich's preseason training that show Robert Lewandowski completely disengaged from the group and looking sad and even frustrated. Now this is of course understandable because Robert Lewandowski has become very frustrated with the whole situation where he has made it very obvious that he wants to leave Bayern Munich and the German club has insisted on keeping him for as long as they could despite making preparations behind closed doors to replace the Polish striker. Now I'm very uh, sure that this operation will come to a positive conclusion and that Robert Lewandowski will finally become a Barcelona player next week. Now, once the club wraps up the Robert Lewandowski operation, it's expected that they will shift their entire attention to try to sign Jules Koundé from Sevilla. Now, Koundé is Xavi's number one option to reinforce the defense. He reportedly asked the club for a world-class center back who's very strong defensively, but could also contribute to the offense. And Xavi believes that Jules Koundé is this player, so the club will be making all the effort possible to try to sign Koundé from Sevilla, including offering Memphis Depay with some cash in exchange for the French center back. Now, as I reported on many times before, Depay wants to remain in Barcelona, so the club will have to sit down with him and try to convince him to make the move by telling him that now that Rafinha and Dembele are on the squad, it's most likely that the Dutch forward will be Xabi's third, maybe even fourth option. Now, there is uh, good news in the Koundé operation, as I reported on in yesterday's video, which I will leave the link for down below in case you wanna check it out. Chelsea have uh, acquired Koulibaly from Napoli and by doing so they've withdrawn from the race for Koundé leaving the door wide open for Barcelona to sign him. Now this is also good because um, by, withdrawing from the, uh, by Chelsea withdrawing from the race Barcelona will not have to engage in a bidding war against the English club who have already made much better offers to Sevilla for Koundé. Now another operation that Barcelona will be focusing on is, this, uh, is the operation to sign Cesar Azpilicueta from Chelsea to reinforce the right back position. Now Azpilicueta have personally asked Chelsea to be released because he wants to go back to Spain to be close to his family. And Chelsea have agreed to respect their captain's wishes and they've agreed to allow him uh, to leave for a small transfer fee of 6 million euros. Now this operation was agreed on last week during that meeting be uh, between Barcelona and Chelsea's executives. However, this operation came to a sudden halt because Chelsea want to secure replacements for Aspilicueta and for many of their players that have departed uh, this summer. Now the operation to sign Marcos Alonso from Chelsea has hit a snag because Chelsea won between 10 to 12 million euros for the Spanish left back and Barcelona are simply not willing to pay that much for Jordi Alba's substitute. So Barcelona will continue the discussions with Chelsea to try to lower the asking price for Alonso and if they can't reach a better deal, it's most likely that Barcelona will abandon this operation entirely. Now we will end today's video with a brief review of Barcelona's first preseason match against Olo that took place yesterday in Olot Stadium where they were celebrating their 100th year anniversary. Now, it's very important to remember that this is Barcelona's first preseason match against a much inferior opponent from the fourth division. So it's very important not to assign too much value to the results of the match or to the performance of the team. 
because as, as it's expected, this is a Barcelona's first preseason match. So this is the kind of match where the coach is gonna try out different players in different positions, try different formations and different plays. Um, so it's very important to remember that and not try to uh, be believe that yesterday's performance was somehow indic an indication of what the team is gonna look like next season. Now having said that, I believe that there was a big standout in yesterday's match and that was the youngster Pablo Torre. Now Torre is one of Spain's biggest prodigies and Barcelona were able to sign him this summer from Racing and I believe that he put on a spectacular performance yesterday. He had many flashes of brilliance with his dribbling, creating space for himself and even combining very well with other players and sneaking through some very good passes. There was even a play where he nutmegged a player from Olot, created a lot of space for himself, ran forward and snuck through a pass to Oba Mayang who shot the ball and was blocked by the goalie. Now if Pablo Torre continues to impress during the preseason, uh, it is expected that we will see him play some matches with the senior team and uh, showing up to some trains with the senior team as well. Now it's very important to remember that Pablo Torre was signed for the Barcelona B squad, not for the senior team. So don't expect him to be starting uh, every single match with the senior team or showing up to every single training. But I'm sure that if he continues to impress during the preseason, that he will place, uh, he will be called up to several matches with the senior team and he'll probably be training with both the senior team and with Barcelona Athletic. Now another standout in yesterday's match was Barcelona's newest signing, Frank Cassie. Now I believe with yesterday's match, Cassis has shut down many of his haters who when he was announced as a Barcelona target said that Cassis was not good enough for Barcelona, that he was not gonna fit in Barcelona's style of play and that Barcelona were only signing him because he was going there for free. While this is completely wrong, as I've mentioned in a previous video, Xabi actually requested the signing of Kessi. He reviewed Kessi's profile and believed that he, will be, that he will be a good fit in the team and a good fit under his scheme. Well, with yesterday's match, Frank Kessi showed us that not only is he a very strong defensive midfielder, but he has also uh, very strong offensively as well. He combined very well with several of the players and he made uh, several successful runs to the box. He he even had uh, an incredible center pass to Obama Yang who headed the ball and hit the cross. So Kessie, not only is he a strong defensive midfielder, but he, has, he is also very good offensively and tactically. Now another standout from yesterday's match was Nico Gonzalez, who as I've mentioned before, Xabi wants to groom him to be Sergio Busquets' replacement because Busquets will be leaving the club at the end of the upcoming season. Now I believe that Nico did a good job in Busquets' position. He held down the midfield and he was very good defensively and he even contributed to the offense with several passes forward and several runs to the opposing box. Now we will we'll have to uh, continue monitoring Nico Gonzalez's um, performance throughout the preseason to see whether he will be able to fill the big, big shoes that Sergio Busquets will be leaving at the end of next season. Now yesterday's match also featured several of La Masia players and many of, many of them put on very good performances such as Alex Collado who had many brilliant moments during the second half. However, he did look a bit rusty which is of course expected given the fact that he just came back from loan from a team that plays differently from Barcelona and from a team where he didn't see many playing minutes. So hopefully Collado will be able to find his form once again throughout the preseason and hopefully we will be able to see him impress with the senior team like we saw him impress with the Barcelona B squad or Barcelona Athletic as they will be known next season. Now overall, it was a very entertaining first half with Barcelona playing very, uh, with the team combining very well and playing very well together with very high intensity. However, we did see the intensity uh, get reduced towards the end of the first half, which is a problem that we saw a lot in the previous season where the team would uh, play uh, a lot of minutes of high intensity at the beginning of the first half and then reduce that intensity towards the end. So hopefully Xavi can address this problem in the preseason and we can have a team that can maintain the intensity all throughout the match. 
Now in the second half, Shabby made several substitutions and the team did not look as good as it did in the first half. It looked a little bit disorganized and disjointed with the team not playing too well together but in a match like yesterday's match that's of course expected you know when the coach is trying out different things different players different formations it's expected that some of the things that he will try will not work and i believe that's what happened in the second season now the match did end in a 1-1 draw with barcelona's only goal get, uh, being scored by Aubameyang, who, uh, who was assisted by mark ter stegen with a ball um with a deep ball all the way from uh, barcelona's box and Aubameyang was able to control that ball and score brilliantly. Um, now Olot scored a goal from the penalty spot where Mika Marmol, who was very solid defensively, committed a silly mistake and mistimed his tackle, giving the penalty away to Olot. Now, as a quick reminder, again, this was a preseason, uh, a first preseason match for Barcelona where Xavi was trying out different things against a much inferior opponent. So it's very important not to assign too much value to the team's performance and to the result of the match. Uh, there are still several weeks left in the preseason with five preseason matches more to come. So we will uh, be able to see Barcelona's uh, progress and what the team will actually look like next season towards the end of the preseason, not at the beginning in the first preseason match. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, please leave a comment down below giving me your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news regarding FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, peace Barca.